Oh my gosh, he got it too. That's a good one. Oh gosh, are you kidding me? Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today we're getting ready to do a little bit of bank fishing, a little bit of summertime bank fishing. I know I got a lot of bank fishermen on the channel and a lot of things that I usually talk about refer to being on a boat. So just wanna do a little bit more bank fishing. Today is really about kind of some patterns that you can use during summer from the bank to catch a lot of big bass. I'm really excited. Look at this, look at, it's just beautiful out there this morning, just just beautiful all right so stay tuned it's gonna be a good one one of my favorite ways to catch bass from the bank during the summer is with a top water in the beginning of the summer you can really catch bass on top water throughout the entire day no matter the conditions but it does seem that as you get later and later into the summer, it really becomes a morning and evening thing. So just make sure if you guys are doing some top water fishing this summer, that you get there as early as possible or you stay late into the evening. I think that's gonna help you get a lot more bites. That, the hooks that come on a whopper plopper are a little bit thicker gauge than I really like. So I actually change out the hooks. Um, the ones that I really, really like are these Berkley Fusion 19 hooks. These things are sticky sharp and strong. I fish the 110 whopper plopper a lot, which is this one that I'm fishing right now. This hook on here, I mean, when you're using braided line, you really don't have to set the hook that hard at all you really just kind of lean into them and they get hooked really really good every single time they literally just about hook themselves so change out those hooks those ones that come on it are just a little bit too thick and i feel like i lose fish that just they don't get past the barb on it so these fusion 19s are a great hook i believe these are a number two that i have on here um and guys that's a, that's your little whopper plopper tip of the day There's another one right in that same spot. Like I said, guys, you do not have to set the hook hard. I mean, that, that guy, that guy got the front hook. Anytime you get a bass that gets the front hook like that on a bait, you know you're throwing the right bait. These are the guys that will get you. A little failure. So guys, we are approaching 25,000 subscribers. Guys, I'm doing a big giveaway. I'm actually giving away an Akuma Helios XX Reel. It's a reel worth $225 and it can be yours. I'm also giving away five of my bass hats. So it's real simple in order to enter the giveaway. All you guys gotta do is subscribe to the channel below and down in the description, there's a link. If you click on that link, all you gotta do is put in your name and email. That way I can contact you if you end up being one of the winners i'm really looking forward to giving away this reel giving away these hats it's going to be awesome so subscribe and enter in the description here he comes here he comes oh <laughs> that looks like the same freaking fish dude there's so many fish in this little corner right here i think i literally think these fish are feeding on the cicadas right now that are falling out of the tree don't have any of my cicada lures, which really stinks. Guys, one of the most important tips when you're fishing a, a Whopper Plopper 2 is always kind of vary the retrieve. It's so easy to just cast the thing out, reel it back in. But I'm telling you what, if you vary that retrieve, stop it every now and then, maybe pop it every now and then, that will really entice a couple more bites when you're fishing it. I'm telling you what, there was a pretty, pretty big one right here. That's not the him, but that's another fish. Golly, all the same size. Not sure if you guys have seen the bank fishing video that I did 
Um, but one of the biggest things that I talked about is how irregularities are huge in bass fishing. And one of the things that is an irregularity in a pond is any type of corner. When you have a corner in a pond, those are places where you can find a lot of fish. And just like I talked about in the video, I, can't, I actually was casting down the bank over here, a little bit straighter of a bank, came over to this corner and literally caught like, I don't know how many, five or six bass here. I've seen several others, including one pretty good one. But guys, I can't tell you how critical that is. If you want to catch more bass, spend more time where the bass are and a corner is a great place. It's a little bit better fish there. Spawned out guy. There's a little bit better one. You ever heard a, a professional angler talked about fish being spawned out? That is the definition. You can see how that fish is long and lean, doesn't have a big belly. That's what these fish look like a lot of times after the spawn for a couple of weeks before they fatten back up. That is a spawned out fish that lets you know that the fish are off the beds for the most part. I'm sure, I'm sure they're completely done here, but there you go. You know, one of the second lures that works really well in ponds during the summer is a big 10 inch worm, guys. The water is typically getting pretty hot in the summer. And with that, the metabolism of the bass really starts to increase. And so they're gonna digest food a lot faster than they would in the springtime. And because of that, a lot of times bass are looking for a bigger meal. So a big worm, it's gonna move a lot of water. It's a bigger presentation and bass absolutely love it in ponds. Now, when I fish a big worm in ponds, I typically am going to fish it on a quarter ounce weight with a five aught hook and usually I'm gonna peg that weight if there's a lot of grass you know a lot of a lot of ponds got kind of pond grass and pond scum and if there's that in that lake it's best to peg that wake or else you're gonna have a lot of just nastiness on your worm all the time now if you have a deeper clearer lake this can still work really well I'll probably step it up to a 3 8 ounce weight in that case same hook in this case I'm not going to peg the weight especially if I can feel rock and brush that's maybe down low so I'm always fishing my big worm on the same rod. It's a seven foot, three inch. It's actually a, it's rated a heavy action. It really acts more like a medium heavy and 15 pound to 17 pound fluorocarbon test. Guys, that's it. That's the big worm. It works super well in ponds throughout the summer. I got see him swimming with it. There he is. Mm. Not a giant. Big wormies. That fish is fat there. Oh my gosh, he got it too. That's a good one. Oh gosh, are you kidding me? Wow, that's a four pounder right there. Yeah. Come here, fish. Oh, big worm, big worm. Oh, uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Kind of learned something in these last couple of fish here. Look at that thing, man. What a freaking toad. It's a beautiful fish. Let's let him go. Oh, it's a big one. I was actually casting out in the middle trying to find a grass line out there. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but that first real small fish that I caught 
came on the inside of a grass line just right there and then i had another fish follow my bait all the way to the bank right here so i started casting on the inside of this grass line i mean it's only two or three feet deep right there not even that maybe two foot at most and and i started seeing fish in there and that's exactly where that big fish came he was right there there's another one i can see him right there that's a good fish right there let's see if we catch this one these fish are literally in inches of water right now. You can probably almost see it in the water there. Literally, the there's no grass. Like if you look down at here, there's really no grass. You can see some rocks and then the grass starts about two foot deep and those fish seem to be on the inside grass line. They're not on the outside um, right now. I, it's probably because it's fairly early in the morning. It's still eight and they might move their way out deeper later, but right now these fish are shallow. Now, like I said, something I really like to do with the big worm is really just cast and drag it. You know, I like to cast out towards the middle of the of the lake and just try to feel around, try to feel some cover, some so maybe there's like I said, a rock pile or a, or, or a weed line or a, a brush pile, something. Um, it's, a, it's a slow way of fishing, but sometimes you can find those little brush piles and rock piles that really have a lot of fish in them during the summer. The other thing that's great about this big worm is that you can also just fish it shallow. You can fish it, you know, you can flip it like here's a little dock. I can, you know, that was a bad flip, but you know, you can flip it right underneath the dock. If there's a bass under there, then maybe he'll want it too. So very versatile worm. All right, guys, the third lure that I really, really love to use in ponds throughout the summer is the good old faithful, the drop shot. You know, I think a lot of you may have thought I was gonna say wacky rig, like a wacky rig Cinco, and that works well, guys, but you know, a drop shot is just something that I just, I feel like is, is a little bit more versatile. You can just use it whether you're fishing in a deep, clear pond or even a shallow, muddy pond, a drop shot is gonna work really, really well. Now, my favorite setup, you know, I'm using 10 to 15 pound braid to a fluorocarbon leader, usually 10 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And guys, this is my favorite pond worm right here. This is a robo worm. It's the six inch fat robo worm in its margarita mutilator color. Guys, this is a great worm. It works not only in ponds, but in lakes and rivers. And guys, I'm typically fishing a quarter ounce weight um, when I'm fishing ponds. A lot of ponds are typically a little bit more shallow. Um, but guys, one thing that's really important to know about your drop shot is your leader length. Now, if you're fishing a drop shot and you're casting it, fishing it from the bank, you know, there's gonna be an angle. When, you're, when your bait hits the bottom down there, there's an angle that it's gonna come back to you at. Depending on how far you want that bait off the bottom, you really need to think of what the angle is gonna be. If you make a long cast in a shallow pond, that angle is gonna be, it's gonna be almost horizontal, which is gonna keep the worm closer to the bottom. So really pay attention to leader length when you're fishing a drop shot from the bank. There's that bass. There he is too. He got it, he got it. Got him, yes. I knew. Yeah. Oh gosh, he's got me in the grass. Come on, fish, get out of there. Oh gosh. Not. Oh gosh, there he is. That was that fish we were talking about, guys. Oh my gosh, he choked it, literally. That's exactly what I was just talking about, guys. I literally tried to catch that fish on a whopper plopper this morning. I saw him, he wouldn't eat the big worm either. Came back with the drop shot and got him. Not a giant, I thought he was three pounds. He's probably a solid two pounder. Good pond fish, but solid fish for sure though. Still fun. All right guys, so those are the lures that I really like to use during the summer. I love to use that whopper plopper in the morning. I really like a big worm. It's a versatile bait, you can swim it in, but it really helps you to just feel the bottom. It helps you to feel if there's inside grass lines, outside grass lines, rock, wood, whatever it may be, that kind of helps you to just 
feel on the bottom, get that contour, and then you got the drop shot, which just seems to catch fish when literally nothing else will. I finally caught that bass I'd seen. I thought it was bigger than it was, but it was still a lot of fun, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like this video. Please comment below if you have a question, and please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.